Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, game week. We're excited uh, about the opportunity to play this Saturday. Obviously, we have to do some things right this week uh, with COVID testing to make sure that uh, that can still and we can still stay on course to play. Uh, but the guys are excited. We had a good uh, workout yesterday. Uh, you could tell it was you know, they see um, you know light at the end of the tunnel with regards to playing, uh, and so. You know, we had a good workout today. I told the guys dress warm. It's a little chilly out there today, but we get we're going to get up back outside for the next couple practices and kind of hone in on our game plan against a really good Arkansas State team that uh, uh, we as a coaching staff have a ton of respect for. They've had uh, I think nine straight winning seasons, nine straight bowl games, and um, I know Blake does a tremendous job uh, with their program and and uh, be a great opponent coming here for us to to challenge us in game one. So open up for questions. Scott Fritchin. Am I on? Yeah, Scott. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, it's been a heck of a journey for Skyler during his career, and now he enters the senior season, and things are so uncertain. Um, what is your message to Skyler as he begins the senior season, and what are a couple ways that you have really seen his growth over the past few months from a football perspective? Well, my message to him is, is enjoy the journey and enjoy it and, and uh, um, play within yourself. Um, follow the game plan. Follow your reads. Uh, he's playing with so much confidence, uh, very comfortable in our system. And so I'm excited about the growth that he's made uh, really from uh, last year at the end of the year uh, to where we're at now. We can add so many more things to his plate from a uh, making the adjustments at the line of scrimmage to change in protections, to change in routes, to change in the run game, whatever it may be. And uh, he's in total control uh, of the offense now, and that excites me. And I also know that, uh, you know, we're, we're not a well-oiled machine yet on offense either just because of missed guys for whatever reason and missed practice time. So I think it's going to continue to be a work in progress this year, but uh, I'm excited about uh, – uh, what he's capable of doing for a senior. And I'm probably dating myself, but in the 27 years I've been at Kansas State, it's been very rare that you've had a true freshman running back crack the two deep for a season opener. What is it about Deuce Vaughn that allowed him to climb so high so quickly, and what makes him special? Well, he's got a great skill set. He can catch the ball extremely well. He's got great vision. Um, he can run inside, he can run outside, and uh, we're excited about seeing what he can do, um, as well as a number of younger players. And, and it'll still be for us running back uh, by committee. You know, we have Harry and Tyler that are going to take a lion's share of the reps, but, uh, you know, Deuce and Jacardier will get their share as well. And we're going to play an awful lot of running backs uh, on Saturday, like we will throughout the year. But uh, I'm excited just to see how mature, uh, or, or I'm excited how mature Deuce has been um, throughout this process, and, and the game does is not too big for him. He's excited about the challenge. Thank you so much. Yeah. Kels? Hey, Chris. Uh, if you can reflect back big picture for me, what would you say was your greatest achievement in year one? Not not like one win here or there, but just overall, what would you say was the best thing you achieved in year one at K-State? I would just say the relationships uh, we as a staff built with the players um, takes a takes a while to earn trust, takes a while to to be hold somebody accountable that as well as know that you still love them. Uh, that doesn't happen overnight. It's still happening and it's still a work in progress because we miss so much time in the spring. But that's probably as a staff are, are something that we're most proud of is the fact that uh, we feel like we've been around these guys for a number of years, not just. Uh, a little over a year with the time we missed. And um, we've heard a lot about Khalid Duke throughout the preseason, but it's Bronson Massey who's listed as the starter in your depth chart. What is it about him that helped him win that slot? We're going to play an awful lot of guys, just like we've done last year here and we've done in the past. And so you're going to see oh, a minimum of four defensive ends, probably five. You're going to see a minimum of four defensive tackles, probably five. Uh, Boom's done a really good job. He's, he has tremendous experience. Um, Khalid's a, a young player that uh, we think has a great uh, upside to him. So you're going to see an awful lot of guys out there on Saturday. John Kurtz. Yeah, hey, Coach, I know you mentioned uh, 
uh, still obviously some rounds of testing to get through this week. Just when you look around the league and see there have been a couple of games postponed already, are there some nerves that, that come along with that and what, what that may bring this week? Absolutely. Uh, you, you have to be diligent. Um, you have to stay on guard. You have to keep your bubble as small as you can uh, each day because you, you never know when – uh, a player, a coach, a support staff, anybody could um, be infected. We, we know that it's out there. And um, uh, fortunately, the guys that we have had um, obtained COVID, they haven't been sick. You know, they've had mild symptoms. And so um, that's, that's a positive. Uh, the negative is those, there's a number of people that are still out for us. But uh, uh, yeah, every day we talk about it, you know, make sure when you leave the facility that, um, you know, you know who you're around, you protect yourself, you protect the team, uh, keep your bubble small. Uh, and if we continue to do those things on a daily basis and continue to stack those great days, uh, we can get to Saturday and uh, how great it's going to be to play a game. Now that we sit here on game week, how comfortable do you feel with the offensive line and the guys that you're going to be able to, to run out there on Saturday? I feel comfortable. Uh, Coach Riley has done a tremendous job with those guys. Um, we're going to play a number of guys up front, uh, and they need snaps. They need uh, experience, and uh, it's going to be good for those guys. We're going to make some mistakes in the offensive line. Uh, I like our athleticism. I like our aggressiveness. Uh, but uh, make, we're going to have some errors, and uh, that's just part of a, a young group playing together for the first time as well as shuffling guys in and out because we're going to play more than five. And, and so it'll be a, a work in progress like it's going to be throughout the early part of the season. But I think that's a little bit of what college football is going to be uh, like throughout the early part of the season. Everybody's going through some issues or some growing pains at specific positions, and you're going to play more and more guys maybe because of it's a lack of repetitions and, and you want to make sure that you keep guys healthy uh, as well as the fact that you're just down certain numbers at different spots. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Adam Meyer. Coach, now that it's game week and the first game day is this Saturday, how does the coronavirus affect the daily life of these players? Well, it affects them every day, without question. They always are. Uh, are being asked to protect themselves. They're, they're uh, helping each other protect themselves by reminding guys to social distance, wear a mask, have great hygiene, something we talk about after practice every day, making sure that uh, keeping your bubble small like we talked about before. Um, you know, it, it's just – it's a part of all of our daily lives now. It doesn't matter if you're a football player or if you're uh, out in the world in just normal working environments. It's in schools and stuff. It's part of our it's a part of our world, and, and we have to continue to accept it, and we have to continue to be diligent, and we have to continue to realize that the virus isn't going away. So, what can we do to mitigate that? What can we do to make sure that? we stay safe. And, and that's something that our, our trainers and our, our docs have done a phenomenal job of laying out the protocols. And, and uh, our, our guys are, are doing a nice job of following those. And uh, we need to continue to do that, not just this week, but we need to continue to do that throughout, throughout the whole fall. And what would you say you expect to see from Briley Moore on Saturday? I'm excited for Briley. He's a tremendous athlete. Um, he can block at the point of attack. He can catch a ball out of the backfield. He can be flexed out. I mean, we're going to utilize him in an awful lot of positions. Um, and so I'm excited for him to have the opportunity, uh, which uh, he's earned. He's, he's earned the respect of the players. I can promise you that. The, just how he conducts himself on the field, in the weight room, what he does on a daily basis, um, he's earned the respect of the older guys, and I'm excited to see him perform. Derek. Coach, I know it's not a fun thing to consider, but have you guys kind of planned out what would happen if you were to have to miss a game because of the virus, and how might that look like? Yeah, uh, we have some contingency plans for every coach. Um, you know, and, and I mess makes a great example by, by the time we get to Thursday or Friday, um, everybody knows the game plan on offense and 
we have it detailed out. Here's what we want to call in first down. Here's what we want to call in third and medium, third and short, that um, a variety of guys on offense could, could call it. And we want Mess to do it because that's his, that's an expertise that Courtney has. But uh, I think that's everything. That's offense, that's defense, that's special teams, that's the head coach as well. I mean, Van would step in for me uh, and, and, and run the show and we wouldn't miss a beat. Um, but that's, that's the reality. It doesn't matter if it's a coach, if it's a player, if it's a graduate assistant everybody has great value on the sideline during game day. And so everybody will have to step up and, and we knock on wood that that doesn't happen to any of us, but we're fully aware there's a good possibility it could throughout the season. Thank you. Mr. Ren. Uh, Coach, a couple of questions. Number one, the, the, uh, roster limits that were announced, you know, the 53 here and the seven on the O line and, and, and how that came about, how much input, uh, did you get? And, and if you did, how did you give it? Was there a big conference call? Was there how, wow, everyone write down their ideas and then the powers that be put it together. How'd that come about? You're talking the big 12. So there was a vehicle yeah. that drove by here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The big 12, uh, uh, requirements, you know, there was conversation back and forth. We had a, a, a preliminary conversation, uh, as head coaches, I think it was the end of July, 1st of August, of what we felt uh, we, we could play with as well as what we wanted to play with. I think there's two different situations there. And then uh, I, I communicated with uh, Gene Taylor as Gene was on calls with athletic directors. And um, the biggest thing that, that I want to make sure of is that the, the line of scrimmage is, is taken care of. You know, you have the ability – uh, to have seven offensive linemen where you feel you can get through that ball game and keep people safe and healthy. Well, if you have five offensive linemen left and a couple of them are true freshmen, I, that's not a good situation for your quarterback, for your running backs, a anything. So for us to be able to have seven offensive linemen healthy, uh, I think you have an opportunity to be able to compete. If you're missing a bunch of wide receivers, if you're missing your quarterback, if you're missing a couple of running backs, if you have that core offensive line, you still should be able to compete and play. On defense, uh, I thought it was the interior defensive line. You, you have to have some interior guys and you have to have a stable of those because if, if not, then you have another issue with potential safety with linebackers and safeties because it's going to come at them so fast. And so, um, from that respect, I think the line of scrimmage is the first thing that has to, has to be solidified for us to be able to play. And that's why every week I think all of us coaches are saying we need to continue to get through this testing. We need to continue to get through another round of testing because I saw and have seen how fast you can be depleted at a specific position. And it may be only one positive test, but you could have six or seven contact traces and all of a sudden – boom, you're done, you're not playing, and people can't maybe understand that. But from a player safety standpoint, it has to be that way. Um, and so the line of scrimmage is the key for everybody. And then a follow-up would be the – I know there's so much that's still unknown about the virus, but we are learning as we go. Is there anything that's, you know, as you've had the, the outbreaks, you know, the different, different times that, you know, when you guys do your contract tracing and you do your research and come back and go, okay, we figured this out. This is, this is something the guys got to really look out for, something that – you know, along the way you've learned that that now has been put in place to make you guys even better? Well, uh, I think when the students came back, we knew there would be an onslaught of potential problems. And I don't think that's just at Kansas State. I think that's everywhere in the country. And I think that is proven to be true. And so more than anything, it's just and and I, I understand 18 to 24 year olds are gonna are, are gonna do some things and they're gonna have some fun and uh, potentially a, a two week illness for the general student if they're not sick isn't something that they're that concerned about. Or a two week illness uh, or a four week illness for a, a student athlete is something that you know that's you're missing an awful lot of time. And so we've just continued to preach to our guys. Avoid, avoid large gatherings, avoid the bar scene, avoid uh, house parties, avoid anything where you're going to be indoors or outdoors. I don't care which one it is. And you have multiple people, 10 or more, and you're not sure if everybody's wearing a mask. And let's be honest, it's tough for an 18 to 22 year old because I have that age group at home myself that they always have a mask on. And so that's the thing that we just keep preaching to our guys. Um, 
to try to keep themselves and to keep their teammates safe by having that small bubble of knowing who you're with. Kels? You mentioned it just there, but when a player does test positive, is it a four-week timetable for them to return, or is it less than that? Kels, I wish I could, I could answer that. That's still to be determined. I know that there's, there's a, an isolation period of 10-plus days, and then everybody's going to be different as far as how soon they come back because there's an awful lot of tests they have to complete. Uh, obviously, everybody knows a number of those things are, are on the heart with echoes and EKGs and some other things that nobody's going to be put back out there before the docs are 100% sure they're ready to go. Is that an extra week? Is it an extra four weeks? Every case has been different that I have seen so far. And uh, I also want to ask about the wide receivers. It seems like that's got to be a tricky situation right now where you're trying to build cohesion with the quarterback. What's that been like through camp, getting those, those guys on the same page? It, it's, it's a challenge. There's no question. It, it's a challenge because, you know, we've had guys in and out of the, out of the lineup. Um, you know, we've, we've not practiced. Because our numbers were down for a period of time, we didn't practice three consecutive days very often. You know, we'd be on for two and then off for one just because of some of our numbers at certain spots were a little bit low. So I don't think we had uh, a, a chance to get a lot of cohesiveness going between the quarterbacks, receivers. It's getting better. Um, no different. I think it has a chance to improve. I, I'd say the same thing about your secondary or your offensive line. Uh, any position where there's a player down, whether it's because of an illness or because of an injury, you want to make sure that that communication is it stays connected all the time with the same kind of voices. And it just hasn't been. But that's for everybody across the country. It's not just us. I know everybody. I look at our punt team. Even our punt team, we're going to have a new punter back there. We're going to have a new guy calling the shield um, because we lost Blaze Gammon. So that guy has changed a lot for us. The guy that's calling the shield, the punt, the punt group up front has changed because of some injuries and things. So everything is about – continuity and um, it's hard to have continuity uh, right now in college football and uh, everybody's going through it and so you do the best with what you have and, and you continue to stay positive with the guys. Uh, Walters. Hey coaches it pertains to Arkansas State a couple of questions. Um, first as you saw what you know, took place against Memphis what, what do you see as the differences uh, between their two quarterbacks, and do you expect Arkansas State to use both guys on Saturday? And then I'll get to my next question. I do expect both guys to play on Saturday. Uh, I think they both, throughout their body of work, probably have earned a right to to be able to play. And and I think the thing that's hard for us to replicate, and everybody knows it, that that runs this style of offense is is the speed. Can we get lined up? If we can get lined up, we have, a, we have a chance. Well, come on, it's not that hard to get lined up. That's their nature of their offense is to make sure you cannot get lined up quickly. And the second question, with the, the newcomers, the changes in the secondary, we'd like to hear your perspective on the matchup with Arkansas State's size and athleticism on the edge of wide receiver. They're, they're extremely talented at wide receiver. Um, Good thing for us, we're experienced in the secondary. You know, between Lance, AJ, Keandre, they've played an awful lot of football. Keandre, obviously, at Minnesota, our safeties have played an awful lot of football. So um, it'll be a big challenge for our guys, without question. It'll be a challenge because they have really, really good skill outside. So we have to do a, a number of really good things of changing up our coverage and rolling different ways and showing them different pictures. and. You have experienced quarterbacks that uh, probably seen an awful lot, uh, but uh, we have to continue to be able to mix things up. Ryan Black. Hey, Chris, how are you doing today? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about Khalid as well as the true freshman running backs, but is there maybe one guy, one or two guys who are – we haven't heard about as much, but they have really come a tremendous way since you guys reconvened for camp. Um, boy, I, I look across the offense, and it's a lot of a lot of older players. 
so, you know, I'm, I'm excited about Cooper Beebe. Here's a young guy that uh, is uh, really a freshman uh, that's going to play an awful lot for us on the offensive line. He's a good example of somebody that we were really high on last year. Uh, but we had five seniors, and so we didn't have to play uh, Cooper. But uh, I, I'm excited about Cooper Beebe. I think he's going to be uh, a terrific football player for us, uh, for us uh, on the offensive line. And we're playing him at guard, and we're playing him at tackle at, on either side. So he's, he's a really versatile guy, and, and I think that he's going to have a tremendous career here, and he's off to a really good start. Uh, he'll play a ton for us on Saturday. Probably on defense, I'd say Will Jones. You guys heard us talk about Will Jones. He's going to play some nickel back for us. Uh, really talented, fast, athletic guy that can play some slot receivers. He'll strike you. He's got good ball skills. Um, so I'm excited about Will as well. Let's get these last two in real quick. Uh, go ahead, John Gertz. Yeah, Coach, I know you brought him up briefly earler with the running backs, but Jacari A. Wright, um, but where is he at progress-wise, not seeing him on the depth chart after he did you know, play some for you last year? Um, he's definitely uh, in the mix on the depth chart, uh, always working uh, with the first group, so to speak. But we have a number of running backs working with the first group. Uh, Jacari missed a little bit of time in fall camp. Uh, he's back um, and, and feeling good. Uh, and so, you know, he – did some really good things early in the season last year, and then we lost him to an ankle injury for a good chunk of time. And then we were able to play him late in the season to, to retain that uh, red shirt because he, I think his fourth, fourth game was against Iowa State. So he'll play. He'll, he'll, he'll have, a, have a role on Saturday. It's a fun thing for Coach Mests. We have a number of backs. We have a number of receivers. We have a number of tight ends that I think it – makes us more difficult to say, boy, if you just double this guy or if you just key on this guy in the run game or throw game, I think Skyler's excited because there's multiple guys that uh, uh, can get the football and do some special things. Thanks. You bet. Last one right here, D. Scott. You muted. Hold on. Was um... – Last time we talked to Coach Standard, he said that J Ball was was uh, knocking off some rust. Where do you see Justin Hughes in his progress over camp? He's improved. I don't think J Ball is where he wants to be, but he's getting he's getting better. He came off a you know a really serious knee injury, uh, and you know from understanding what we're doing and getting guys lined up and being a great voice and communicator out there. He's every bit of what I knew he was going to be. From a physical standpoint, I know he's going to just continue to get stronger as the year goes on. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, that was, a, that was a horrific knee injury that he, that he suffered. He's mm -hmm. got Eli, who's suffered a, a, a horrific knee injury as well. So they have some things to feed off each other and, and utilize. Uh, but he's going to play an awful lot for us. We're fortunate there because – Daniel Green's going to play an awful lot for us at Mike Backer. Justin Hughes is going to play a lot for us at Mike Backer. Eli Sullivan's going to play a lot for us. Cody Fletcher is going to play a lot for us. We have four linebackers with really good experience that uh, can feed off of each other, and we're going to need all four of them, uh, not only Saturday, but throughout the entire year.